Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. Just before one o'clock in Honolulu, seven o'clock in New York. It is Tuesday, May the 4th, 2021. And this is uh, the daily report for gold and silver. We talked about the fact that yesterday's dynamic move in both gold and silver took it exactly in terms of the high of the day to current resistance that we've identified over the last few weeks. That was an ominous move and we saw follow through today with both gold and silver giving up large parts of yesterday's gains. On today's show, we'll talk about support and resistance levels, why the fact that we believe a neutral stance in gold and silver are the proper action, and why we sent out a trade alert on copper. The show begins now. On yesterday's show, we commented that both gold and silver had exceedingly exceptional gains. However, in both cases, the intraday high matched where we have identified major resistance. In the case of gold, it comes between 1798.20, that is the current fix on the 100-day moving average, and that key psychological level of 1800. You can see that on the lower left-hand side chart as a deep blue line. That's this one here. At the same time, we've identified major support coming in at the 21-day exponential moving average, which is currently residing at 1766.90. Yesterday and today, we had highs that pretty much came to the top of the current resistance level and then traded lower. In the case of today's trading activity, the market actually closed below its open and below yesterday's close, giving up approximately half of the gains exhibited yesterday. In the case of yesterday and today's move in gold in terms of support, you can see it continues to hug the 21-day average. What that tells me is that although we are range-bound, we are attempting to either break to the upside or to the downside, depending on the fundamental events that are occurring today. Today's pressure was created simply by statements made by Janet Yellen talking about the belief that interest rates will have to be raised soon to account for current fiscal spending, including the $1.9 trillion stimulus plan, the fiscal stimulus outlay, as well as the current proposal by President Biden to revamp infrastructure, education, among other things, with a price tag of approximately $2.2 trillion. While he has stated that that will be largely, if not fully covered, by raising corporate taxes and to those very wealthy, many individuals, the majority of them Republican, believe that that is not a feasible solution to raising the capital needed for these initiatives. We are looking at a daily candlestick chart of June gold. I have included not only our four moving averages that we have been using, as well as our shorter-term Fibonacci retracement, but an Elliott wave count to gauge where we stand in the big picture and where we could see gold head. First, when we look at support and resistance levels, which we covered during the price board, we are still deeply trading in a narrow range, and it is defined by the moving averages, 21-day exponential, as well as the 100-day. In the case of our current chart, we are also looking at Elliott Wave. The Elliott Wave count that we are looking at presumes that we have been in a major market price decline really since the beginning of this year. Gold was trading just shy of 1960 in terms of a closing basis, traded to these lows of 1675, which is being labeled a primary fourth wave, and the conclusion of that wave. From there, we entered a fifth wave. Now, that is an impulse wave, and by nature, when it is complete, should, in fact, has to take out the high achieved on the top of that third wave. However, where we are now is in a fractal or sub count of that primary wave, which simply means that the primary fifth wave will be composed of five waves in it, three of them meaning wave one, wave three, and wave five being impulse waves, 
and waves two and four being corrective waves. However, at the same time, we can subdivide each of the impulse as well as each of the corrective waves into a subcount, which means then our first wave of a primary fractal could then be subdivided into a one, two, three, four, and five, although this is not the scale, as well as our corrective waves being some sort of an A, a B, and then finally a C. That being said, I believe that we are about to complete the beginning of this wave one, and that, of course, is being subdivided as follows, a one count, two, our large three, our corrective four, and we are currently in a fifth. If the fifth is not concluded, we should see a little bit higher pricing, but not too much. But following that, we will see some sort of a minor ABC type correction. That is why we continue to maintain a neutral stance. As of 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, we have the most active June contract of gold fixed at $1,778.60 after factoring in today's $13.20 decline. That's a decline of approximately three quarters of a percent. Silver futures, which had a phenomenal 4% plus gain yesterday, gave back a little over 25% of that gain, a drawdown of 1.35% or 37 cents when rounded up, and is currently fixed at $26.59.5. As far as silver goes, although we have the moving averages in bullish alignment, we have just seen the 100-day recently cross above the 50-day. That changes things, and the fact that we sold off after hitting resistance tells me we could be seeing more downside in the week ahead. Although here at the Gold Forecast, we primarily focus upon the precious metals complex, the move in copper has been undeniable. It has been huge with copper more than doubling in price since the beginning of March last year. That is a substantial move, and with recent reports suggesting that it could trade as high as $5.89, it has definitely drawn not only our attention, but a trade alert that we sent out today. For those interested in trading copper, we have set forth the parameters in which we are looking to get in at the market. Current pricing is right around here. We also put our stop placement in the trade alert itself and will cover the rationale behind the price point and placement when we look at some copper charts. Lastly, a quick look at copper. We sent out a trade alert today. It is above our entry price. We continue to see copper futures, which have basically doubled since March, have large spikes. And that, of course, is followed by periods of consolidation. Sideways movement in the case of this sideways movement with the downside bias as well as this. But then that is followed by another upside spike. We are near the all-time record high and believe we will exceed that. I will talk about that in more detail on tomorrow's show as tomorrow's show will focus upon the copper market. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you, as always, good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for the next daily update and review. Bye-bye.